Welcome, everyone, to the Kia Knicks postgame show. The Knicks' nine-game winning streak is over, even though Derrick Rose went for 22 points, 10 in the fourth quarter. But Chris Paul scored the last seven points for Phoenix. That three in the final seconds helped seal the deal as Phoenix beats the Knicks tonight, 118 to 110. Great to have you with us from our Delta MSG studios. Bill Pito along with Wally Zerbiak. Alan Hahn joins us from his home studio. One bit of good news here, guys, for the Knicks. Detroit beat Atlanta. So Atlanta, the Knicks, Whew. with identical 34 and 28 records, but now only a game and a half in front of Boston and Miami. And, Alan, the Knicks had the lead until the final minute of the third quarter, and then were outscored in the fourth quarter, 31-23. Yeah, gave up 62 points in the second half to a Suns team. Certainly that can get you some offense, and you saw that every time it seemed like early the Knicks were going to try to take this game up 15 a few times. Chris Paul and company pushed back. I mean, Chris Paul really is is the example of if when you talk about what are the Knicks missing to become a real contender, Wally, Chris Paul is probably what they're missing from being a real contender. What a difference he makes for Phoenix. Oh, he was tremendous. He really was. Down the stretch, you need that point guard that can close games. But Derek Rose was really good, too. So I don't know if the Knicks were missing someone like that tonight, necessarily. I just think Julius Randle couldn't really get going. You know, when he doesn't have phenomenal performance, it's going to be tough for the Knicks to beat a team like the Phoenix Suns, who can really score the basketball. And how about Mikael Bridges? He was really solid, too. He made every big shot in that second half, especially the fourth quarter, playing off Chris Paul and off Devin Booker. They needed that third guy to step up. He stepped up and he was a big reason why they got that win you know Alan you look at Julius Randle tonight only three points in that decisive fourth quarter he just uh, look they I thought also give credit Monty Williams and his coaching staff you know teams have been trying to figure out how to stop Julius Randle and the Phoenix Suns figured it out they played him very physical and they saw early on you were allowed to play him physical and he was very hesitant every time he tried to get to his spot somebody was already there and that was the difference. Now, right here, there's the end one for Emmanuel quickly. Early on, the Knicks had a four-point lead in the quarter, but that was pretty much it. It was a 21-6 to run for the Suns after that once the once the Knicks, you know, had that four-point lead. And there's Cam Johnson. Couldn't make a shot all game. And then in the fourth quarter, he all of a sudden gets hot, knocks down shots. And, you know, this guy again, I mean, how good is he as a scorer? Probably one of the best scorers in the game next to Kevin Durant. Very tough to stop one-on-one. -on -one. And... Bridges with the three, and, and the three ball really started going down for the Sun, certainly as well. And here's your shot. Look at this. Just spin, chuck and duck, right <laughs> down. That's what Chris Paul's been doing his whole career, the big shot. And that's kind of what I was alluding to. It's that guy in the moment that can make the big shot, and he certainly was that guy tonight, Wally. What a phenomenal career he's had. And everywhere he goes... That franchise seems to win, and that's what he's done in Phoenix this year. Yeah, he's a tremendous leader. Uh, you know, he's done it everywhere he's been. And this Phoenix team has a lot of young talent. And then you put together Chris Paul, one of the all-time great point guards and probably going to be a Hall of Famer um, with the numbers that he's compiled in that locker room. And he's still got a lot left in the tank. I mean, he looks quick as ever, knocking down shots, mm -hmm. step backs all over the place. Uh, it was an impressive performance by a Phoenix team. I thought the Knicks played well. Um, but again, 62 points, too many that Allen alluded to in the second yeah. half. That was the difference. Yeah, Bill, if I can jump in just on Wally real quick on this, because it, what, what Wally said is true as you're watching this game. I mean, this was a really good game. Yeah. You know, this wasn't like the Knicks were outclassed or anything. I mean, they, they did a great job shutting down Julius Randle, but he made some plays, you know, when he had to. The Knicks had leads in this game. It was a really good game. And you got to give credit where credit is due when the opponent is just better. They... Fifth game of a five-game road trip, they could have easily packed it in down 15. It shows you this team's made a little bit different. That leadership of Chris Paul is that difference. Also, key guys, Phoenix in that fourth quarter hit six threes. Yeah. Devin Booker for the game, 33 points. And you talked about it in the pregame. He is so good in the mid-range, isn't he? He is, and that's where and they run it unbelievable offense too they run a lot of screens for him they get him into space like that where he can just a couple dribbles nice little one-on-one -on -one move and remember reggie bullock is an elite defender on the wing and he's doing this over bullock you know devin booker has good size he's sneaky tall long arms he's quick and he's a great shooter and a great scorer he just gets buckets and then down the stretch of games when you have a closer like chris paul allen i mean this team is formidable and let's see what they can do in the playoffs I wouldn't want to play them. I mean, Utah, hey. Phoenix, these are two teams that are coming. They're young. They're hungry. Clippers and Lakers better watch out for these two teams.
They're also well coached. And Devin Booker, you know, is a guy that went off in the bubble. Now they won eight in a row. They didn't lose a game in the bubble and did not get into the play in because during the regular season they just didn't win enough. But he kind of sent a message to the league as a scorer and a guy that's tough to stop. And he just continues to grow. And there was some talk about would Devin Booker want to get out of there because they weren't winning and would he get frustrated? I think he's pretty happy right now with the situation. He's got a great coach and they had a great leader with a really good core of young players in the West. They're going to be an interesting team to watch in the postseason, no doubt about it. I think, guys, though, the Knicks fan has to be encouraged. The Knicks hung in there again against an elite Definitely. team. Remember, they beat Utah earlier in the year. They've been very competitive against teams like Philadelphia and the Nets. And again, for the first 35 minutes of this game, they led. It wasn't until late in the third quarter and then in the fourth quarter that Phoenix took control of the game. And Derek Rose, Wally, was spectacular again. 22 points off the bench. His season high is 24. 22 tonight with six assists and six rebounds. Yeah, and he created so much good stuff. And, th and this was why the game was so exciting. I mean, it was back and forth. Knicks 15-point lead. Then Phoenix comes back. Then the Knicks build the lead back up. And then when Derrick Rose was on the floor, he just made a lot of good things happen. And guys are really enjoying playing with him. And when you're playing with a point guard like this that can create offense for you, it's just a lot of fun. I mean, look at these passes. Vintage Derrick. Rose. I mean, you talk about turning back the clock and just making huge plays for his team. He was absolutely phenomenal, and he's one of the big reasons why the Knicks have been on this nine-game winning streak. Thought he played great tonight, but just couldn't overcome one of the elite teams in the league. But he did everything possible. I love his floater, too. You need that floater when they have a shot blocker like DeAndre Ayton in the lineup because DeAndre Ayton does a good job protecting the rim. I think Randall really saw him when he was driving to the basket, Allen. But uh, you can't say enough about what, how Derrick Rose has been playing. His energy is fantastic, right? And that's something you keep an eye on because, as I mentioned in the pregame, now this will be five straight games where he plays over 30 minutes. So you always worry about his minutes, but it's kind of winning time right now, and this is why – you know, he takes care of his body. I thought something great that he said in regards to his relationship with Tom Thibodeau. And he talks about being in the huddle and you see a guy who's so intense. And Derrick Rose is like, there's no way this guy wants to win more than I do. Like he said, he thinks that stuff all the time. So you saw Derrick Rose in this game trying to make all the winning plays for the Knicks when there was really no one else that could get it done in this game. It's fantastic to see what he looks like right now because the Knicks are certainly going to need him to see if they can clinch not a 7-10 now, a playoff berth before the end of the season. Speaking of playoffs, it, it felt like the playoffs when you're it watching did. this game. Mm -hmm. Very intense and loud crowd, and uh, they were into it back and forth pretty much the entire game. Excellent game again to watch. Tom Thibodeau's reaction coming up. The Knicks' home winning streak over at seven. Their overall winning streak snapped at nine wins in a row.